Meanwhile, on Table Talk with Rich and Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> it's in the Daily Planet. In the Daily Planet? Oh, that's yeah. the suit. That's that's Superman. the newspaper. Come on, man. Yeah. We've already started. We've already started off. Who? It? Superman. You know the guy, right? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Welcome to Table Talk. I'm Rich. And I'm Alex, and today we're talking superheroes. That's right, superheroes. And uh, da, da, da. As, <laughs> as you know, um, we like to pair beer with board games. So um, those are two very special things to us. Um, we are talking superheroes today. Before yes, we, we get into the beer and before we get into the board game, um, we have a very small announcement. Um, very small, yeah. Very small. Um so our first episode, episode one, Life, Table Talk, uh-huh. aired November 15th, 2019, <laughs> one year from today. Yep. Thank you. Hopefully, wow. If we hit November, hopefully you're watching this on November 15th, 2020. <laughs> well, not, you know, uh, you know, Rich, I got to say, usually one year anniversaries are more like a okay, like, we're not, you know, jokers about this. <laughs> but, like, I feel like one year yeah. in this year right. is, is, is like someone running a marathon where there's right. kind of like a, yeah, 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 respect. <laughs> okay, yeah, you made it. Yeah, we chose the we chose one heck of a year to start a podcast. Um, <sighs> that was supposed to be in person and, and uh, you know, yeah. in the same room. And, yeah, yeah, we know. should have a clip of, of the episode one uh, coming up. But, sure. yeah. Hey, look at us. Um, hey, there's us. Yet. Yeah. I have Let's relive the old days. The old yeah, glory yeah. days. For Feels like a decade a ago. Not so bad price. If this was in New York, this would be a slam dunk of a deal. Uh, 150000 That was a good beer that I was drinking. A very special okay, craft brew. Spin black. <laughs> known as <laughs> Corona. 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 <laughs> so, it's so, so, cra- so crafty. So appropriate, have, uh, yeah. So um, crafty. Goose Island uh, looks like the summertime. Those yep. were our first beers. Yep. First beers ever uh, in life. I'm living in a ranch. Not bad. Yeah, it's a it's a ranch with a with a horse that has way too much teeth. But yeah, it's a six hundred thousand purchase price for the horse. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should drink to our first anniversary. What do you say? Oh, Mr. I think we definitely should. Yes. Um. So let's yeah let's talk about beer. What do you got? You go first. So. Uh, because I'm uh, in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, which is known as uh, uh, the capital of the state of North Carolina ever mm-hmm. since the late 1700s, yeah. I am going to be drinking uh, from Gizmo Brew Works here in Raleigh. It's called Civic Duty, and right. the beer is literally called Vote. Vote. I like it. Or or it's called Civic Duty. And here's the fun Appropriate. part. Appropriate. There's a little QR code where you can scan to register to vote. Oh. And then, how, because how this awesome. is brewed in North Carolina, they have even the listings of, of what the process is for North Carolina voters. That's pretty awesome. How cool is that? that? That's, that's a really thing. cool, actually. Yeah, I like that. So, so cool. given our theme of superheroes, I think it's a very superhero-ish thing. Yes. I yeah. mean, I can't imagine Captain America not voting. I feel yeah. like he would be the first one to register and vote in Brooklyn, you know, because he's a kid from Brooklyn. So <laughs> that's right. that's what I'm. That's right. what I'm. Uh, Captain enjoying. America would you... vote. He would want you to vote as well. He wants. He would you. want you to vote. Yeah, you. You, you. to vote. You. No, no, you. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you? Uh, what are you like partaking that. in? Um, so I'm going local. We just moved to Rockford, Michigan. Um, I wanted to um, support the local brewery here. There's a great brewery called Rockford Brewery. Um, so that is what I'm doing. They have a beer called, um, du- I, why do I always do it? I always forget the name. I want to say duplicity. It's not duplicity because that would be wrong. It's duality is the name of the beer. And That's I chose cool duality because we're talking about superheroes. Ah, now you're talking. Right? Alternate egos. Um, do you do you disappear if you drink the beer and wear glasses at the same time? Right, sort of thing? yeah. Yeah, I wish I had a pair of fake glasses. I probably would have worn them um, for this episode. Um, but I, alas, I do not have any because I don't need them. 
Um, but yeah, this is um, duality. So the beer, actually, the duality of the beer is that it's a wheat beer. It's a Weissen. Uh, sorry, not a Weiss. It's a Weiss beer. It's a wheat beer. Okay. Um, I think that's German origin. Um, but it has fruit in it. It's a fruit wheat. Fruit okay. Weiss. Nice. Um, good. So it's got raspberry. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a nice color to it. I haven't opened it yet. I was waiting to open it with you. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of different variations of wheat beer, but a Weiss is a German variation. Variation Duality references the complexity of the fruit and the wheat relationship mixture of spice and tart flavor. Lovely. And I forgot to uh, actually uh, additionally say that I'm drinking an American pale ale on here. There you go. So are you going to pour or are you going to drink from the can? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pour. Mm. Oh yeah. And I, I, I hate to say I actually already poured. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Look at this. I got a I got a nice big mug. Dude. Oh, that's solid. Yeah. Thanks to my uh my friend who just got married, Dan Warfel. Shout out Dan Warfel. Yeah, Dan Warfel. Big fan of the show. Big fan of the show. That's great. No, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Look at now this. he has to, now, now Dan, you have to watch because we mentioned your name too. Look how red this is. Dude, that's great. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's gonna have a, a huge, a huge <laughs> head on it. I apologize. You should definitely be a bartender. This is not. This is definitely not bartender, bartender level pouring at all. Um, Would you like some you beer with that foam? Look at this. That's glorious. It is. It. I've just been licking my fingers because it fell on my fingers, and it's. It tastes great. All right, to one year. To one year, and, my friend. Uh, and to superheroes, you are a hero to me. I guess. And you as well. A lot has happened in yeah. one year. Yeah. Um, we have lots of updates to get to. Um, so a lot of things have changed. Uh, obviously, um, we keep changing locations. Every right. show, we have a different background. We have a different location that we're shooting at. Yeah. And that is because we keep moving. Um, yep. <laughs> um, Alex, uh, you, I'll let you share your story, but you've been, uh, went Brooklyn to, to Virginia, right? And then Virginia yes. to North Carolina. Correct. Um, and you have big news that you can, I'll let you share later on. Um, yes. my, my wife and I just moved from Brooklyn to Michigan. We now live in Rockford, Michigan. So from the last episode that you saw to now, we have completely moved our lives <laughs> and live in a completely different place. There's some format changes that people might have noticed that have happened in the last year. Yeah. Um, so obviously we used to meet in person. <laughs> That's not happening anymore because we, uh, don't live in the same place, but we are going to nope. continue to do this. So you as the listeners, you as the viewers, um, this is something that you probably would get used to. Um, we don't, uh, have, I mean, we have a small audience. We're small. Um, we have no illusions of grandeur that there's a thousand people watching us right now, but if you are watching and you are listening, you deserve to know kind of what our thinking process is. And um, and that's it. This is going to be it for the remainder, um, probably for a very long time, um, for uh, the the next season to come. So that's the next yep. point on the agenda is um, that we are finishing up season one, which mm -hmm. will be the next episode that's going to launch in December. So December mm -hmm. will be the end of season one. Mm -hmm. We'll officially call January's episode season two, mm -hmm. and we'll continue to try and roll out one every month as we've been attempting to do. Um, I think we missed one month this year, but other than that, I mean, it's been a crazy year. I'll give us some leniency. <laughs> it's, it's, um, we've had to go through a lot, uh, for the first year of the show, but, um, yes. but I, I like this. This has been fun. It's been a great way to connect with you as well. Um, as not, li not living down the street from each other. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird not being able to bike over to your place anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But. You know, this is, yeah. uh, I, I appreciate the, the ability of what Zoom has done, um, at least as a tool. And I'm hoping right. uh, we, and, and hopefully for those listening, that this episode is going to actually sound better on an audio level than in the past, I don't know, two or three episodes. We were trying to figure out the right. format. Yeah, um, yeah. Yep. So. It's um, been a, it's been a work in progress, but I, you know, yeah. we, we take pride in what we've been doing. Um, yeah. And it, we kind of hit the ground with the, just the idea and just decided we'd improve it along the way. And hopefully it, it is, I believe it has been, uh, I, I like what it's becoming. So, yeah, um, same here. Yeah. It's, it's been great. So just so you guys know, we're going to keep doing it. Um, hopefully you keep tuning in, tell your friends about it. Um, we're going to, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, Rich, uh, for all, for all you listeners out there, uh, yes. of course you're aware of craft, uh, brewing, 
places, yeah. but this is what right. is known as a craft podcast. Right. So, oh, that's a great. Oh, the craft podcast. This is Why the craft have we not been marketing people. like that? Like, yeah, well, like we're that. we're marketing it right now. I know. <laughs> Table talk with Rich and Alex, the craft podcast. Craft podcast. I mean, there there is some benefit of knowing that there's like, <laughs> hey, there's only 15 people probably listening to this right now, but right. those 15 people know everything about exactly. us and and are really cool people. You guys are in the know. Shout out to you, people. Yeah, you guys are on top of it. You guys um, are. When yeah. this, when this blows up, you're going to be like, I was watching those guys back in 2019. Oh, yeah, back in the back in the 2019. Yeah. 2019. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just laugh thinking about like somebody's watching this in the year like <laughs> 3080, <laughs> and we're like dead, and it's just like some recording on like a hard drive somewhere, <laughs> and they're just like, "What are these guys doing?" <laughs> well, they probably won't even be speaking our language. Uh, oh yeah, right. Rich, so like, yeah. there, there's also that. What do you think? So... It's just probably like a series of clicks. Like... No, no, it's all gonna just. They're gonna speak emoji. That's what they're gonna oh, do. They're gonna speak emoji. <laughs> I don't know what. (laughs) Thumbs up. (laughs) I I have no idea. No idea what that's going to turn out, but just watch the emoji movie. Apparently then that'll give you. Um, Sorry. Quick, quick, uh, quick update. So we're going to start putting the links to the breweries uh, in the the description as well. So as you know, this is a podcast. So if you're listening, thank you. Um, There's also a YouTube channel called table talk with rich and Alex in the description. We're going to have the links to the, the brewery. So Rockford brewery, in Michigan, and what was yours again, Alex? Uh, mine is the Gizmo Brew Works in Gizmo Brew Raleigh, Works. North Carolina. Yep. So if you want to drink the beer that we're drinking, um, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of local, but um, if you're in the area you want to look them up, um, yeah. the links are going to be in the description. So. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get to the game. So let's get to the game. Here it is, Legendary, a Marvel deck-building game. Assemble Marvel's finest heroes to combat masterminds and thwart their schemes boom, boom, boom. excellently spoken sir and um that individual there in the middle is hulk um wolverine captain america spider-man um it's a marvel based game if you haven't caught on to that um i think that's loki in the, and in the magneto on the left i think it's magneto on the left yeah, yeah. um so yeah um so th- it's a marvel marvel based game um deck building game which means there's cards a um, little pixelated, sorry about that. But um, So deck building usually applies to card games, um, which we include within the realm of board games, uh, where the construction of your deck is the primary element of gameplay. So this is kind of what the cards look like. Um, so there's no little miniature pieces or anything like that that you're going to move around. Um, it's all going to be card-based. All right? Cool. So to set up the game, players choose a mastermind villain, which is circled on the left. Um, I believe that's Red Skull. That's Red Skull, yeah. Yep. Stack the particular villain uh, villain's attack cards underneath it, then modify the villain deck as needed based on the villain's particular scheme. All right? So there's a villain deck on the right. Um, it should be the next... Oh, sorry. We're going to just go to the heroes. So players then choose a number of hero decks. So you have Spider-Man, Hulk, Wolverine, etc. cetera, uh, and shuffle them together. Since players use only a handful of hero decks out of the 15 included, the hero deck can be can vary widely in terms of what's available. So you're not going to play with the same heroes every single time. Uh, cool. So in this one, we have Wolverine. I think that's Hawkeye in the middle, Spider-Man. Um, so those cards can be turned over, and they're going to go right to left across that that board. All right. So what happens is players begin the game with a matching deck of shield agents and troopers, which contribute to a player's recruiting and fighting ability, respectfully. Over the course of the game, players recruit back... <laughs> I'm I, I like disrespectfully. Yeah, respect. I've always that, it's always a, yeah. a funny term. In, in anyway, that order, continue. Yeah, right. yeah, continue. Continue. Over the course of the game, players recruit powerful hero cards to add to their deck in order to build a stronger and more resourceful deck. Players need to build both the recruitment powers, which is given to you by the agents, which you can kind of see on the left here, um, and their fighting ability, which you start off with just the troopers of fighting ability on the right. So to, um, you need both to combat the villains who keep popping up and causing trouble. All right, so there's the hero. So players recruit heroes from any array of five cards with empty slots, um, and refill the empty slots as needed. All right, and then above that, you have the villain deck. So at the start of a player's turn, they reveal a villain and add it to the row of villains. So you start with the sewers on the right. Uh-huh. Uh, this row has a limited number of spaces, and it fills up. The earliest villain to arrive escapes, so I'll get all the way through 
um, all the way through the city to the bridge. Uh, then they escape, and you have this escaped villains up here on the top. Um, so possibly, so when they escape, they pos possibly punish the heroes in some way. Some villains also take an action when showing up for the first time, such as kidnapping an innocent bystander, which is not good. <laughs> the villain deck also contains master strike cards, and whenever one of these shows up, the mastermind villain controlled by the game takes a bonus action. All right. So, um, so yeah. Um, so if you're not familiar with like a deck building game, um, this we kind of talked about this in I think episode six with Dominion. Mm -hmm. um, it, deck building game means that you have a deck. Uh, of cards and you're trying to build it and craft um, craft a hand that's going to help you continuously throughout the game. So you're trying to get really strong cards in your hand all the time. Um, so things that can slow you up, things that the other players want you to have in your hand are what we call dead cards, which you see the wounds and the bystanders up at the top. Right, yeah. Those are what we call dead cards. They're cards that are going to be added to your deck that don't do anything for you when you draw them. They're just empty action cards you can't do anything with them they just take up space so as players fight and defeat villains they collect those cards which will be worth points in the end of the game so villain if you defeat villains they have victory points that will help you to win the game players can also fight the mastermind if a player has enough fighting power they claim one of the attack cards beneath the mastermind which has a particular effect on the game if all of these cards are claimed the game ends and players tally their points to see who wins if the mastermind competes his completes his scheme however having a certain number of villains escape for example or imposing a certain number of wounds on the heroes and the players all lose so it's actually pretty unique in that aspect as well where it's a co-op game kind of like betrayal at house on the hill our last episode yeah i was um, thinking about that it's a co-op game up to a certain point right you're still fighting with each other but you, you each have the same goal but one person is going to win the game or you all lose <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah there you go. And that's the game. Wow. Yeah. Is it truly legendary? It truly is. It truly, <laughs> truly is. Uh, <laughs> then uh, tell me, favorite moment you've had with that game with someone you've played? Is there anything in particular that sticks well, out to you? I've only played it once. And the, the thing that stood out about it for me was how really simple it was to learn. Like truly well, simple it was. Yeah. And, and I mean... It takes some skill to kind of really be good at it. With any deck building game, you got to know what cards you need and what cards work well with other cards. You kind of have to pay attention to what you have. Right. Um, and it, it, you play it kind of how you want to play it, too. I mean, you're basically playing it as a shield agent. So you can, you know, if you can kind of pick and choose the heroes that you want to, like, have playing for you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not a big, like storm fan i don't know why i picked storm i i'm a fan of storm i mean she's pretty cool yeah she's awesome Halle berry cool yeah um <laughs> <laughs> like but if you're not a big storm fan you just don't want to play with storm and her powers and yeah just ignore storm get you know grab wolverine or grab deadpool oh. or hey something. hey don't don't take storm's thunder there come on oh, <gasps> oh, oh that that was good that was really nice. good i'll, I'll drink to that oh, yeah. nice <laughs> um, so what we're going to do uh, it's one to five players 30 to 60 minutes to play publisher is Upper Deck Entertainment um, so uh, we're actually so another thing I want to do is we're going to put a link to another video that explains the game in a lot more detail so if you're really interested in the video or in, in the game we're done talking about it <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to go off on other tangents now. Um, but if you want to learn more about the game, uh, not that I encourage you to click away, but if you, you really do, um, there's going to be a link to in the description to to learn how to play that. So yeah, so yeah, man, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. It makes yeah. me want to makes me want to play it down here. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I wanted to take a personality test. All right. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna click that link that you helpfully sent me. Oh, okay. You're gonna take it to on your end. Cool. All right. Um, while you're pulling that up, I am going to disclaimer the heck out of this episode. All right, because I know that somebody out there clicked on this this video or this podcast because they wanted to hear about superheroes because they're super into superheroes. <laughs> I I just want to throw it out there right at the very beginning. I was not into comic books as a kid. I wish I was. They, I think that I think it's awesome. Um, so I don't. I'm basically basing all of my superhero knowledge off of mainstream media, <laughs> like Marvel movies, 
Dark Knight. Um, I mean, all the probably just kind of this level type of conversation um, fodder that I have to work with. Okay, <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. Um, I'm going to say something wrong at some point that does not apply. It's not canon. I apologize <laughs> profusely. Um, but I still think it's an interesting topic and I would like to explore. So. You know, I appreciate that. For, for those who are yeah. listening who are very serious of, about this particular topic, which I respect, I think that it's a, it's a treasure trove of great storytelling. Um, right. We, we, this is a kind of conversation that you, intru- that, you, that you showcase to your friend who is not into it at all. <laughs> Right. There and, you go. And this is the gateway conversation. Yes, exactly. I'll leave exactly. It at that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Are you are you giving it up? Yeah, I got the first question. Are we reading it out loud? Um uh, yes. So just just so you know, um, this is also I think Marvel um this towards lean this leans towards Marvel, I believe. Because our options right off the bat are the Marvel superhero teams who are all drafting new members. Which do you want to be a part of? So it's pretty biased right off the bat. Tell me what you're choosing. Our options are the Avengers, Shield, mm-hmm. the X Men, and the Fantastic Four. Which one are you? I'm gonna go with the Avengers. I, I'm a pe- I'm a people person, and, and it's more than just like four people that I'm that I want to be a part of. Right. So I was gonna choose Avengers too, but I was actually leaning more towards Shield um, because I like go. I like kind of the the organizational aspect of things. I don't know how many questions this is. We can we can zoom past. <laughs> we can like fast forward through this if we need to. If you had it your way, you'd like your last meal on Earth to include apple pie, bacon, fast food, or candy. <laughs> apple pie. I mean, I was gonna go if Doctor Doom is bound by honor, but then I saw the join the Fantastic Four, and I I have to I have to team up. There you go. Fantastic. Delegation five delegation of labor. It's always important. There you go. So I mean, would you take somebody's place in the Fantastic Four? Uh no, no, no. I just, just I just them. I'd i just be the, the non named non numbered person. You'd be the fifth wheel. <laughs> yes. Fifth wheel. There's the Fantastic, Fantastic Four at number five. <laughs> <laughs> it was never added. <laughs> There's a part of me that wants to choose the most bizarre answers to all of these, but that wouldn't be very honest of who I am. I'm I'm going to do with living a life of mystery because if there's a piece of me that's actually confessional, it's kind of fun to be able to be like, you know, not every, not everyone knows everything. All, all joking aside, Alex, are you yeah. actually a superhero in real life? No. Everybody wants to know. No, I'm not. Well, of course you would have to say that. Right, I would. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to go vigilante uh, down here. You know, you're not you're not all of a sudden going to see a, a you know a ton of you know bat signals being flown around in in mm. North Carolina. All right, living a life of mystery. All right, cool. Man, this is a very yeah. Sorry. Uh, the, uh, I, okay, this is question ten, so this must be the last question. One. So, Nick Fury has asked you to rip. There's a question eleven apparently, so we're going to just oh gonna keep gosh. going. All right, there's got to be 15 because this has big close to it. Pick one thing from a fairy tale to have with you in everyday life. Okay, last question. And there's a question 16. <laughs> oh, we're never this is this is never going to end. All right, we are in question 20. <laughs> How would you describe the art in your home? Question All right, I'm guessing 20. there's 25 questions. That's Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Are you gone? Oh, yeah, my bad. What social faux pas really grates, grates your gears? Great. Grinds your gears. Grinds your gears, yeah. Yeah, the Come most. On, magic What whiz. sends you into a blind rage for no reason? Bad grammar. No. People chewing with their mouth open. Burping in public. Deliberate ignorance. <laughs> Deliberate <laughs> ignorance. People who constantly forget other people's names. You know, Jerry, I have the same issue with that. Um... People who, sorry. Thanks, uh, Mark. People who. All right, right. There you go. I got my result. I got my result. Okay. Cool. All right. You go first. I want to know what you are. So this is either them doing a really good job and breaking it down or they. Uh, completely random. Uh, <laughs> completely random. And we just wasted our time. Exactly. He's, he says, so for Magic Quiz, nice. You're Iron Man. Share your results with your friends. It's Please. a hoax. It's a hoax. I'm Iron Man too. 
Oh, boo. Boo, magic quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. All right, read, <laughs> both read, read how we're down. both Iron Man. All right, well, at least let's read the, the paragraphs. I'll read the top one. You read the second one. Okay. You are not afraid to just go for it, whatever it may be. Yes, you're arrogant, but that's Shame only on because you. you've accomplished so many cool things in life. If life gives you lemons, you find a way to revolutionize the entire lemon industry before breakfast. Insanely competitive, you're married to your job. And if you did happen to get married to an actual person, we're willing to bet they'd have something to do with your job. You can be a prick. Goodness. Okay, you can be a prick, but you're willing to sacrifice everything to help other people. And that's not insignificant. Share your super result with your friends. Take another quiz. Everybody who shares this is Iron Man. I guarantee it. (laughs) If anyone else actually who's listening to this podcast tries to take this quiz and you get Iron Man, like let us know and then we can email Magic Quiz and be like, look, like I want my time back. Let's blow this wide open. Like I (laughs) We're cracking the case on the magic magic quiz. quiz. The magic quiz Marvel conspiracy. And this is only done so they can sell (laughs) tickets for the next coming Iron Man. Well, when there's movie theaters, but you know. Yeah, Iron Man fifteen. Yeah. Now on Um, Disney Plus. All right, moving on. Um, discussion wow, topic. That was oh, a journey. That was a journey. Twenty-five questions. I apologize. It went faster <laughs> when I tested it out originally, and Sorry. I got Iron Man the first time I did it too. Not, I didn't want to spoil it. But, Boo! Magic yeah. quiz. Just the same thing every. I time. I mean, I answered it pretty similarly, so it made sense for me. But yeah, yeah. yeah well, you answered guess, it a little. Yeah. You answered it a little differently. So. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're gonna go through some discussion topics. Superheroes. I love. This is a great topic. I'm looking forward to it. Um. So we're going to talk about our favorite superheroes. We're going to talk about if you could only have one superpower, what would it be? Um, we're going to talk about uh, if you were a superhero, what would you look for in a super villain? And, um, of course, we got to have the Marvel versus uh, DC Universe debate. Um, of course. Which we can, you know, we're, we can embarrass ourselves with. Um, I'm interested in discussing the theology aspect of superheroes. Um, not only superheroes, but heroes in general. Take the super off. We can discuss mm-hmm. that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, as we always do, we're going to close with movie conversation and our favorite superhero movie that has come out. So let's start with the top. Um, favorite superhero. What do you got? All right. So I have two. Um, okay, one. I don't think that's allowed. Okay, fine. Then I specifically I'm gonna... said favorite superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off on the right foot here. Um, all right, so I, I'll tell you what I was. I was. Uh, uh, you can do two. I'm just being. No, 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 no. I, I, I have my one, but I'm going to tell you the kind of position that I was thinking about. So, okay. and I'm not that interesting of a person. I'm not going to choose some random one like I don't know, like Bungie Man or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Don't sell yourself um, short. It's like You're very Man interesting. Something, yeah, yeah, something like that. So uh, it was a toss up for me between Spider Man and Superman. Um, Spider-Man to me, I think is one of the greatest superheroes out there because his commonality factor where he's like, a, he's a kid, he's a high school kid, yeah, right? you know, trying to pass his chemistry all the while defeating villains in New York, like in, in New York's an actual place, which right. I really like. Right. However. Right. It's not Gotham. Not, right. It's not yeah. Gotham. It's not Metropolis. Like it's an actual, it's an actual place. It's which tangible. I think, yeah. It's a tangible spot, which is really fun, especially if you live in New York or have visited New York. Right. Um, kind of adds to that culture. Also, as someone who has lived in New York and been a tour guide in New York and, and, and have really come to love what New York is as just a, a kind of a both the actual place and the place, but also kind of the mythos behind the city itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spider-Man's incredible in terms of like what it what those movies have done to make New York what it is like. It's an actual place in the comics. It's not like a made up town. Right. Um, right. Right. I do like that, too. I like that. Yeah, it's a good point. The the thing, though, for me and Superman, and I've always thought that Superman is is this way be, intentionally, is I aspire to who Superman is as, like, hmm. his decision-making and his who he is. His morality? Kind of. His, like, his moral ethos? compass. His ethos, his moral compass yeah. is a really... It's something that I have always felt inspired by. Well, that's, um, like, the that's the goal, right? That's why you make right. superheroes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, there you go. Mission accomplished. And, and I love that the, like, I love, personally, I've always also loved that he comes from a smaller town. Um, Smallville. Smallville. Like, it's a it's Smallville metropolis. It's really is that is that really where he came from? Or is that just the name of the show? 
Uh, no, that's the name of the town he grew up in. Yeah. Okay. I think. Actually. Somewhere Again, Kansas. we're out of we're probably out of our depth. Somebody correct us if we're wrong. But he's a, he's a boy from Kansas. That's what I know. Smallville is yeah. is yeah is what yeah. I know from the television series yeah. from when I was growing up. Yeah, exactly. I always so, got that and Kyle X Y mixed up. I was like, well, Superman didn't have a belly button. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes sense because he's an alien, technically, right? I, I could just see like an entire comic dedicated to like. Does yeah. Superman have a belly button? The, yeah, connecting the we dots don't between know. Kyle XY and Superman. Right. Just, if you well, don't know I mean, Kyle XY is a television show, probably on like what, NBC, CBS or something. Something, something like a that. A long yeah. time ago. Um, That's funny. Probably just aged myself a little bit. That's right, all right. We're, we're, um, we're old, man. It's all right. Uh, so, so Superman. Yeah, Superman is mine. What is What would be yours? Well, I mean, I so right off the bat, I, I knew... Right when I was thinking about this question, that Superman was not going to be my favorite. Interesting. I don't dislike Superman. Okay. Um, there's uh, there's an issue I've always had with Superman. A few issues, actually. Number one, he's way too powerful, right? I never really I agree. understood how he had any trouble doing anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, he's almost, like, so powerful that you're just, like... Like, what's the deal? Like, what, are, like, what, what problems mm. do you have that are that are plaguing you constantly i have a rebuttal to that later go, but go no go ahead but rebuttal okay, now so, i want to so, know so so i think personally and i remember there was a comic of his that i remember reading and i forget how i stumbled across it but he and it was it was pretty dark like the the situation there was a woman on a ledge and she wanted to commit suicide mm. and not good and so she's standing at the edge of this building and superman is gonna go Saver and and essentially it boils down to the woman saying, "Look, like, no matter what you do, I'm gonna try to do this again. Like, at some point, you're not gonna be around, and I'm I'm gonna do this because you know my life is this, my life is that, you know that mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. And so there was a fantastic visual where you see Superman be like, "Well, I'll be here. I'm 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 with you. Essentially, where she he doesn't try to talk her down, but just mm. stays with her." And so there's this one panel of him floating during the day in this in one position. The next panel is at night, and he's in the exact same position, still essentially guarding her, just but not intervening. With his cape, his yeah, cape yeah, 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 in the back, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's not intervening. So to me, the the point where I I I don't always think the the Snyder movies did a necessarily a good job at doing this, but it's not that he's all powerful is the thing that needs to be focused on. It's the fact that he is all powerful and he's in a, in a world where there are not all powerful beings. Right. So he has to interact in that capacity and almost like a kind of in a Hulk fashion where it's like, right. yeah, sure. Hulk can smash everything, but like it's more of him res- controlling the power that he has. Yeah. So, right. Anyway, right. That's why I like it. I, I respect that. Um, that. That's a fair point. I will take that into consideration in the future when I encounter Superman and other various mediums. The only other problem I had with Superman. Okay. Worst disguise in the world. Worst <laughs> disguise ever. Seriously. Going from glasses on as Clark Kent to glasses off as Superman. Did you ever see the, the 1970s Superman with Christopher Reeve? I didn't, know. 70, I think it was 78. 79 I think it was I've seen I've seen snippets I have never right. and, you, and you know the theme dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. okay so uh Christopher Reeve did actually a pretty good job in in the like glasses on nerdy Clark Kent glasses off Superman okay and he did and he did a good job to where like it's not just the look of it but it's also the voice that the that demeanor he, changes the de- right exactly yeah. the, the, the demeanor about it and good all right. Um, yeah. So, see, this is this is good. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm open minded to it. Right. Like I, this is great. You're right. There, there is a there is a play aspect to it. There's a theatrical aspect to it. Yeah. And it's a comic book. I mean, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's a comic right. book. Right. Yes. Um. So, um, I'll go into my favorite, which, which is. It it does kind of come through as a little sarcastic and probably um, insulting to some people. Um, I so growing up, honestly, I only knew the main superheroes, right? 
we have an infinity amount of superheroes, right? Infinite amount to choose from. Um, Superman, Batman, all that kind of stuff. I was always kind of intrigued more by Batman just because he didn't have a superpower. Right? Yeah. It's just a cool he was twist. just he was just smart and rich and athletic. Right? It's kind of pretty cool. Um so I would tend to lean towards Batman. Um but I did some research and I I was just kind of digging and I stumbled upon something that is now my favorite superhero. Um it's a little character called Squirrel Girl. <laughs> okay. And we're going to have an image up so you can look at Squirrel Girl. Um, her name is Doreen Allen Green. Okay. Um, was born to Dorian and Maureen Green in Canada. When she was 10 years old, Doreen discovered she could communicate with squirrels. Just let that sink in. <laughs> squeak, squeaking, squeak, squeaker, squeak, squeaking. She could communicate with squirrels. Is her superpower. <laughs> She suffered a modification in her genes for unknown reasons that granted her squirrel-like abilities, which manifested predominantly as a prehensile tail. I mean, she just doesn't like put things and bury it and then forget where it is. <laughs> or yeah, if a car is coming, she doesn't know which way to which way to go across the street. <laughs> um, uh, um, her powers include a furry prehensile tail, roughly three to four feet long. Sizable buck teeth strong enough to chew through wood. Superhuman strength and agility that allows her to easily jump between trees. Uh, her fingers have sharp claws. And she possesses retractable knuckle spikes, um, which I kind of picture like Wolverine almost. Um, retractable knuckle spikes roughly two to three inches long on each hand. Uh, most importantly, she can communicate with and understand squirrels but does not communicate with squirrels telepathically. Squirrels have also been depicted as understanding her when she speaks English. That's Squirrel Girl. Um, wow. So she has a pretty good rap sheet, I should say. So I did some research into her. Um, she has a lot of pretty key victories. So she has a victory over Dr. Doom, who I would say is probably, what, the the man, right? The villain. Yeah, I mean, he's like one of the big villains. Yeah, the villain of all villains, right? He's up there. Um, Not very nuanced of a name, but, you know, to the point. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so she has a victory over Dr. Doom. She has a victory over Deadpool, Wolverine, mm-hmm. By Beast, who I don't know who that is. Um, and most impressively, Thanos. Whoa. Wow. Yes, she's said to have defeated Thanos. Now, this is a bit of um, an issue, and before people start getting upset with me about about publishing this right there it is can be argued that she defeated she defeated a clone of thanos Mm -hmm. okay so people don't know but there are eyewitnesses apparently within the cos cosmic comic world that say she defeated thanos (laughs) just saying i don't know if that's before he had the glove or after he had the glove i don't know but it's on a rap sheet so all right well Interesting. Squirrel girl. Squirrel girl. I just love it. Driving the other team nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. If you could only have one superpower, what would it be? Talk to animals. Talk to animals? Really? Yeah. And I'll cool. tell you why. Yeah, why? S- so eyes and ears on the ground and in the air and in the sea is really interesting to me. Oh, to yeah. To at least get to right. hear. Because now, mind you. Some of the animals, like ants, I'm sure they wouldn't have much to say. If anything, they'd probably just repeat each other and be like, <laughs> uh, I'm getting more food, getting more food. You know. <laughs> save for the winter. Save for the winter. Like They're, they're very good investors of their time and right. of their resources. Yeah, they, right? probably, they're, they're not, they probably speak in short sentences. It's not going right, to be they, like a bug's life. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't line up to you know for Thanksgiving or Black Friday or whatever at Macy's like that. That's not their style. If anything, they're just going right to the bank and then they're just putting in their safe deposit box and then that's 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 what they do. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. uh though, to me, like the 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 big thing that's interesting to me is knowing. Like there's like I mean think about it. There's so much stuff that happens around the world, and we have no idea. Like what happens? A lot right. of it's probably not that interesting, but like on the animal side kind of things, I'd I'd just be fascinated to know like what do, what do dolphins know? I mean, they know something. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, like just I feel different like, like like travel patterns of various, I don't know, shipments. 
they can just like report back to you and be like, they're sending the the milk cartons of justice <laughs> to China. I don't know. I don't know See what. You later. The, yeah. I don't know. What, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Swim well. I don't know what the milk cartons of justice are, but milk cartons of justice. That, that sounds that's a, sounds like something worth saving. That I, apparently you, you put justice in with anything, yeah, and, right. it, and it makes sense. Like you ready? <laughs> the cards of justice. Do yeah. Or or <clears throat> the pistachios <laughs> of justice. <laughs> Snap! Right there. Yeah, say so I justice yeah. anything. It 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 uh it makes everything better. Yeah. What so what would your super name be uh as um, the person who can talk to all I feel these like animals? Animal Man is a little too on the nose. Yeah. So I would go Whiskers. Why not Whiskers? I like Whiskers. Whisker Man? Just no, just Whiskers. Uh, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it. The Whisperer. Ooh, I like that. That is that is good. That is good. Yeah. That's what I that's what yeah, I go yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so good. The whisperer. That's great. Um, so what would your what would your disguise be? What would your uniform or like what would you wear? Uh so wait, are we talking superhero uniform or are we talking regular disguise? Like, let's let's talk civvies. disguise first. Yeah, disguise. So civvies, what do you what do you civ- what do you do you, what does your normal persona wear? And then what and- do you change into when nature calls? <laughs> Uh, um, well, I, there's a piece of me that's thinking, uh, if, if you think about how superheroes, and I was thinking about this, like superheroes usually choose an occupation that has some relation to what their, what their actual superhero thing does. So for instance, Clark Kent is a journalist. Oh, he's, he's, he's going out there, uh, in the, in the thick of it to kind of understand, you know, what's going on. Right. Um, uh, Peter Parker is a photographer. He's also able to go around the city. Um, any number of, Bruce Banner is a scientist you know any number of things so I think I would be probably either a zoologist or a veterinarian um, gotcha and so my regular something to explain just... your animal knowledge exactly if it like and... slips out without you thinking about it right right yeah. and then you know if I start communicating to the you know neighbor's cockatoo or something like then then it's not a <laughs> it's not a big it's not a big deal yeah um, all right last but not least what's your origin story so What's my the origin, origin story of the whisperer. Here it is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> On a humid day in July, the thunderstorm is rolling in. <laughs> little Tommy, uh, my name is Tommy in this apparently. Tommy is the name little, of the whisperer. Little Tommy is wading out on low tide. Come back, Tommy! cries his mother. Tommy isn't listening. The thunder rolls over. Blam! Lightning strikes, killing both his parents at the same time. Of course. Because all superheroes lose their parents really quickly, right. apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy lies on the beach, <laughs> un, uh, recovering from his consciousness. <laughs> and suddenly, a dolphin nudges him to the sand. And he says, Go on, Tommy. Be well. And then Tommy realizes the lightning strike made him understand human. Oh, sorry. Humans, as well as all animals. <laughs> and from that day on, he knew he was meant to be the whisperer. That's what I got. Da, 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 da. I, yeah, that's a little more like Twilight Zone but that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. I, I went Twilight Zone and just no, no, seemed no, appropriate. Okay. I like so that. So now I want to ask you the question. Lightning strike. Yeah, lightning strike. Because, yeah. you know, what women want, animal whisper, it could be the same plot line. Except instead of women, it's it's animals. What? I mean, as far as a plot, it's a really good explanation as to how he can hear other people's thoughts. Um, just yeah, just have a lightning strike, bolt of At least lightning. I think it was lightning, or it was some electricity thing. I forget. I forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Mel Gibson. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so favorite superhero? How about you? or sorry? I mean, super- Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Still, we just talked about it. Obviously, you weren't listening. I've just. <laughs> Just lost of fifteen people <laughs> listening. I'm sorry, guys. Um, sorry. Superhero name. What would be um, your superhero name? All right. So I chose this pretty carefully. Um, I always find myself wondering. Like, I'll get a cup of coffee, right? And mm-hmm. recently, I've switched to decaf coffee. Um, after my first cup of coffee, 
Mm-hmm. So I only have one caffeine cup of coffee. Everything else after that is decaf. Mm-hmm. And I keep wondering things like this, like I wonder how many people when they turn 30 end up switching to decaf coffee. Cause before I've had a pretty strong opinion about no decaf ever because I don't feel like it, it should exist in the industry. But now I understand why it exists. Um, so I'm like, well, I wonder what the statistics of this are, right? Like how many people at the age of 30, how many Americans, how many non-Americans, like switch to decaf around this time? <laughs> um, so I had the idea of becoming a superhero named Mr. Statistic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Statistic um, knows every statistical fact about everything. He can pull it at the drop of a hat. All right. If you want to know how many people use the phrase at the drop of a hat, he, he will tell you <laughs> percentage wise. Just like that. Be like, yeah, you know, about 80 some percent of people say this. Um, the, the major demographic is about, you know, 18 to, to 40 some years old usually use that phrase. That's what he would say. Um, his job would be a disgruntled weatherman who the local news <laughs> channel can't fire because he's so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so good at statistics that he just like you said like it should be something that he can like apply right in his daily right. life right so in he's he's life, so right. good at predicting the weather because he's so good with st- statistics that he's basically he, he hates his job though that's that's key he hates it superheroes always have to hate their jobs to some degree yeah um his suit would be a pretty generic suit but the logo would be a pie chart I like that. Now, would yeah. the suit be a uh, grid design, like grid? Yes, paper? yeah, it has to be. You're right. Okay. It has to yeah. be. Has to be columns and and rows. I like that. <laughs> rows and columns, like and then right in the middle, a pie chart. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, origin story. Um, his parents were killed, <laughs> like in true fashion. Parents were killed in a flash flood that could have easily been predicted had the local authorities paid attention to the historical data. Bam! Yes. Well, that was good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I just that 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 needs to happen. So if you're out there, if you're making your own comic series right now, you're creating your own superhero universe. Add um, the Whisperer and Mister Statistic like to that. your universe and um, give us credit. <laughs> Just, just, just at our podcast, and that's, right? Because if you don't, we will find you. What? What are you, Liam Neeson? You said you had a villain idea for me. What's the villain? Oh, idea? dude, I have a, I have a great villain. You what is it? This? So, in the hills of Palo Alto, <laughs> David Dusseldorf <laughs> wants to tap into Google as a physical being. He hooks himself up into the computer. Something devastatingly wrong happens to the electricity, flooring all of Google's mind power into his brain. David Dusseldorf is now known as Mr. Know-It-All. What? So it's all knowledge without any wisdom. Bam! Right there. Interesting. Yeah. So is that, does it upload to his like it, like re, like does it continue to go like yeah, right. updates just, and everything just, like, just upload straight to his mind? Yeah, he oh wow! Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there you go. I like that a lot. Um, I had um the outlier as Ooh, my my villain. Good name. What was yeah. that? Well, who would it, what would um, it be? The, it's the one thing Mister Statistic can't compute. It's like the the outlier, the exception. Um, oh, yeah. I so like whatever, that. whatever is least likely to happen will happen. So it's this constant like back and forth, right? Because if Mister Statistic is saying like, "I know what your plan is, Miss Outlier," and then the Outlier will be like, "Well, if you know it, then that can't be it." <laughs> <laughs> I have I have Mister Outlier's first name for you. What is it? Murphy. There you go. There you go. Little Murphy's Law. There. Yeah. There little Murphy's go. Law. I like it. Yeah. Murphy Outlier. That is, that is it, yeah. And yeah. and Mr. Statistic is always like, knows exactly what his plan is, but then he's like, wait a minute, if I know what his plan is, that can't be his plan. Yeah. Can't be what his is plan. happening? Yeah. What is there happening? you go. All right. What's the, the the Whisperer's villain? The thing that I can think of is like a like super rich guy, almost like a Lex Luthor type who's like a big game hunter. Ooh. 
Yeah. But 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 it, there's something particular. I, I don't really know. I mean, call him the Hunter. I guess is a good name for a villain. Yeah. Um, but who is you know bent on anarchy, destruction, something like that. Let's clarify. He's a hunter, but he has no respect, right? Right. He doesn't. He doesn't care. He just goes he after care. anything at any time. He's not even killing you know. for sport. Right. He and 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 he'd go after you know the Cubs as soon as he'd go after the Buck. You know whatever oh. whatever it would be. Right. Okay. So there's no um, much as like Mister Know It All. It's all skill, but no wisdom in gotcha. in the use, which is usually how villains tend to be, where they're mm-hmm. very they're incredibly gifted at what they do whether in their mind or in their body but there's really no um it's either it's not that they don't have a moral fiber it's just that it's not tapped into something that is in a sense tied to wisdom yeah it's it always perspective lot. right right it's always like that's the challenge of writing a good villain is twisting the perspective so it actually makes sense right, right. so that you can actually reason with it right you can say think, wow you, you'd have yeah. to be crazy to really to really dig that far into it and and really practice it the way that you're practicing it, mm-hmm. but I can at least see your perspective, right? Yep. Yep. That's that's the true art of villainness. I think the best recent villain is uh, other than Thanos uh, is probably Killmonger. Honestly, is, is oh, I don't like know that you, one. Which, who is that? So it's it's the villain in Black Panther. Um, oh and, yeah, the guy yeah, with the yeah, gun yeah. in his arm. Uh no 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 that's Winter Soldier. Uh uh Killmonger is the guy who who grew up in Oakland. His father was killed by the original Black Panther, T'Challa's father. And oh, yeah. and I think they're cousins or something. Um and so the kid right. is Michael B Jordan comes back and then he essentially kills he tries to kill T'Challa for the throne. Right. Uh, because it's all based on like gotcha. you know honor Creed or whatever. And, Creed guy. Right. Whatever Creed, his name Creed is. Creed guy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Michael B Jordan. That's that's him. Um yeah. So there was, uh, 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 but his whole his whole uh, reasoning as to why he became what he became actually, like when you're watching, kind of like mm-hmm. mm, makes kind of makes sense, man. Yeah. Like I get where you're coming from. It's right. not good, right. but like I get where you're coming. But yeah, from. it's basically this extreme version of, of right what most of us would consider actual like logical sense, right? Right. It's yeah. kind of like uh, uh, Captain Hook, you know, hating Peter Pan because he, you know, yeah. lost his arm and tossed it to the croc, crocodile right. kind of thing. Yeah, he like, just has kind of an extreme reaction. He's got, you got to forgive, Captain. You got to forgive. Poor guy. Um, sometimes, sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you lose your hand to a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> what's the What's that great line from Hook? He's just a mean old man who doesn't You're have a mother a or something. Mean old man. And you need a mommy. Mother, you need a mommy. You yep. need a mommy bad. Yep. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty I mean, much it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Run home, Jack. Wait, Jeff, Josh, Jack? Jack. Run home, Jack. Jack. Run yeah. home, Jack. No, Damn. no, no. Turn it around. <laughs> home run, Jack. Home run, Jack. <laughs> that was a great um, hook. Um, oh, thanks. Impression. I, I try. I appreciate it. All right. So next on the agenda is so we have our our superheroes. All right. We yes. have the Whisperer. We have Mister Statistic. Let's get into Marvel versus DC. Mm. Um. First off, um. Why do you think it is? Why do you think it has come down? Comics were probably what started to be really big in like nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Marvel came later than DC. Marvel came after DC. Mm-hmm. At okay. least if I got my history right. Okay, um, so back in the day, we have a whole bunch of comic books coming up. Um, now in 2020, um, there are two that really sit on top of the heap: Marvel and DC. And if you disagree, let us know. I'd love to hear why. I I I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but <laughs> as far as I understand it. Marvel and DC are at the top of the heap. Those are the two that I keep getting introduced to. Those are the two that I aren't most familiar with. Why? Why do they exist? And which one do you prefer? Why do they like? Why is it? Those well, why? Two? Why is it those two mainly? And and which one do you prefer? Um, I don't know why I'm throwing that first question at you because uh, no, 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 okay. that's fine. I, I, I. Well, I, I think partially it's because there's two different movie companies. At least, at least. On the modern day, pre- uh, sorry, the present day perspective, as in right now in 2020, I yeah. think it's because DC has mostly been under the umbrella of Warner Brothers, whereas uh, 
uh, Marvel has been under the clutches umbrella right. of of Disney, not clutches. That's 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 mean. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the umbrella of of Disney. This is how Disney um, is personified nowadays. Yeah. Now I ha- I'll hand it to both companies. They've done a really good job, in particular Disney, in creating something that that has not really ever been seen in film, which is mm. a almost like a giant web of stories that actually all relate to one another. Like if you think in particular Marvel, they made yeah. 22 movies and they all, most yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the incredible Hulk, the first one with Edward Norton was the first one to actually use this tactic where they right. did that like end scene toss right. in. Right, right, right. And, and then, then they tossed, got rid of him. <laughs> and they, they tossed in that and they tossed him out. Um, there you go. In um, walk Mark Ruffalo. Yes. Not a bad, not a bad, uh, not bad. second, second great, decision. Great Hulk. Um, great Hulk. Yeah, good audible, good audible in there. Right? Yeah. Um, right. uh, Omaha. <laughs> but I, I'm also a real big fan of what DC is trying to do in that it's almost like Greek God myth style that they're trying to pull where they, they kind of mm-hmm. know that like Superman and Wonder Woman and, and some of these, these people are like, they're essentially Greek gods. They're not, they're right. not like, Peter Parker, you know, like awkward kid or, you know, that right. Kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you prefer Marvel or, or DC Marvel? Definitely. Um, like I said, okay. my, my knowledge is based off of mainstream media, which is the movies basically. And, um, okay. um, I honestly, I mean, I've been so not really anti superhero. Like I just, I never got into it. That's the problem, right? Like I never willed myself into the superhero scene. Um, but I'm still fascinated by it. And this is kind of back. Do you remember um, Daredevil with, uh, um, yeah, with uh, Ben uh, Batfleck? Ben, yeah, 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 Ben Affleck and uh, what's her name? Jennifer Jennifer Gardner. Jennifer Je- Garner. Yeah, Jennifer Garner. Garner. Jennifer, Jennifer Garner. Um, sorry, we're, I'm butchering names. Um, but it, yeah, like that came out, and I was like, like man, like superhero movies just aren't my thing either. You know, like, right? Like, I mean, they like they just hadn't hit that yet. Like they hadn't, they hit, hadn't hit their stride. They hadn't hit the formula, right? Dark Knight, um, I'll talk about later, but really kind of was that movie for me that kind of said, oh, superhero. Like this is kind of a cool, this is a cool approach to superheroes. And I thought it was unique. I mean, it's something that comic books have been doing forever, right? Like mm-hmm. really studying this dark aspect, kind of this alter, like alter ego, but also like this very, like you're a superhero, but it's also like, it's not all sunshine and rainbows type of thing. Right. Like, you know, like like Dark Knight really got into that, and I liked it. And then I learned, oh, like comic books are like this. You know, they mm, kind of mm-hmm, – it's not mm-hmm. just like like there's trouble, he goes and saves the day, or she goes and saves the day, and then they come back, right? Mm. Like there is there is this really kind of in-depth story to it. Mm. So I've always respected it, I feel like, since I've been exposed to it. But Marvel – once the Marvel movies came out, I, I kind of stood away from them for a little while because I kind of had that approach. Or I kind of had that mindset, and then I don't know if it was when I got Disney Plus or what, but <laughs> I, like they were all there, right? They're yeah. all accessible, and yeah. I just started watching them. Um, just kind of, I looked up, you know, um, how to watch them in chronological order, <laughs> right? And I, I did it. I went watched them in chrono- chronological order, starting with Iron Man. Um, I didn't do any of the television series. I didn't watch Agents of Shield or <laughs> right. anything like that. Right. Um, but yeah, I watched them in order, and I got really into it. And now, you know, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a Marvel fan for sure. You know, the the one thing I will contest of what Marvel has done, and I what? don't think it was intentional, hmm. but I feel like now most movies are Marvelized in the sense where if it's more. If it's a big movie, more than like I don't know, a hundred million kind of thing in budget, mm-hmm. there's always that like, let's sequelize, you know, and and let's let's like continue to kind of essentially milk the the the, the product as as long as you possibly can. Right. Um, I think the notable exception with Marvel, and this is part of the reason why they were able to do it so well, is that they have comics spanning almost what, 50 years worth of worth of canon mm-hmm. that they're pulling from right um and this was the piece that always made me a little hesitant um oddly enough with star wars which is a 
incredible like like mm. to me the original trilogy is something that was one of the main inspirations by why i got into movies in the first place yeah like how do you end it right um whereas marvel like they, they knew how it ended because they were basing it off of already pre-written right. work yeah um yeah so that's the one they thing that the, i'm always the hopeful in yeah so I'm always hopeful with comic books in that it's like, look, yeah, yeah they do string you along, but they actually right. have like they're basing it off of something. It's not just like well, right coming up with it. And this is a major difference in the mediums, right? Like comic book is looking for characters that are repeatable, right? Right. That you can yeah. put in a lot of different situations. Like you're you're like you buy the next comic book, like you don't really want there to be a, an end. Because like, you're used right. to kind of, it's like a, te- it's like your favorite television show. Like whatever you watch, if you watch Big Bang Theory, if you watch whatever, right? Like you're, I don't know why Big Bang Theory came to mind. Um, but like, like you watch the show because you like the episodic aspect of it, yep. right? Because those characters are meant to interact with each other. <laughs> the writers built them that way so that they yep. can interact with each other in a lot of different situations. In a lot of different situations. Hit, which is where you get TV tropes, right? Because... Mm-hmm you writers have to throw situations at these characters mm-hmm. with, with a movie you, you, like m- characters in a movie are, are supposed to have a beginning middle and an end right? right very compact so when you try to take that character from an episodic um timeline to a mm-hmm. movie timeline mm-hmm. there's a little bit of artistic um challenge to that I would yeah think. So. You know, it's funny, and I remember hearing from a friend once years ago, um, and he would always be someone that ha- always had a big old book, like, that he'd be reading, he, mm-hmm. and he'd, he'd always have it around him, and I was always like, you know, man, like, what's Wrapped the deal? Like, you're him. big book. Yeah, basically, just big old book. No, but but I was always asking him, I'm like, Help dude, why? some water. <laughs> <laughs> they called him Biblioteca. Um, There's uh, sandwiches in the refrigerator. <laughs> His his first name was Dewey, um, <laughs> library joke. Uh, so uh, uh, librarians uh, everywhere are rejoicing. Yes, exactly. Bring back Dewey Decimal. Um, <laughs> no, but the thing that he he told me and it and it totally changed my mind about those like really long books. Like I don't know, it, kind of Monte Cristo. Some of these like these these classic books that are like you know as big as a, a yellow Moby Dick, you know, Moby Dick, a yellow book. Yeah. And his whole thing is like his whole theory was the longer the book. The less of the less quickly I would feel obligated to read through it. So his whole mm. thing was that he was actually able to like be with the characters more. Right. Yeah. Kind of. And the more I thought about, like, oh, that's kind of it. like right, stewing it, which is kind of what TV and Marvel does. Which to yeah. me was kind of like, and that all of a sudden it 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 kind of the light went on, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh oh, these this kind of stuff is really enjoyable because you know you you live with it for you know, however many months while you're reading. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, in this argument, right. We, I, I think it's a no brainer. I mean, I, I am interested in other people's opinions. I think it's a no brainer. The Marvel series has captured that episodic aspect, right? It feels as true as I, it can be to a certain degree to the, the comics. So, yeah. Um, I have always wondered outside of Marvel and DC, um, I always figured the answer was yes, but I didn't really know for certain um, if other universes existed, like superhero universes. What was competing with Marvel and DC to get to the top? Like, do you know any? Well, I know of two comics. Uh, at least I think they're called Vertigo comics. Oh. And then uh, so there's So you can't Dark... look at them for very long without... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad. Especially Jimmy Stewart. He he you know yeah, it's right. bad. Yeah. Um <laughs> there's superheroes everywhere. <laughs> Mary. Oh, what's going on? Oh, what's going on here? I, I can't I can't I can't see, but I got the cape in the way. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> um oh, I'm taking the moon, Mary. <laughs> I'll lasso around it and pull it down with my super lasso. <laughs> with my super lasso, yeah. Yeah. Um now we're now we're going Jim Carrey on that. Um <laughs> Uh no the, the 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 other one I knew of was Dark Horse Comics which I think used to publish some of the Star Wars comics before Star Wars got brought in by Disney when I'm assuming that now Marvel uh, uh releases 
uh, any of the kind of Star Wars comics because there are comics of Star Wars that out there. All right, did some did some research. I'm going to list them off for you. All right. Okay. <clears throat> the Kirbyverse, the Ultraverse, the Valiant Universe, Project Superpowers, Red Circle, uh, Irredeemable, Dakotaverse, Wildstorm, Invisible, Terra Obscura, The Boys, Black Hammer, The American Way, Top Ten, and Astro City. Those are all different superhero universes, with Astro City arguably being one of the most popular. This universe is a busy place. I guess multi-universes. Multi-universes, yep. Um, so, okay, last thing. not I guess not the last thing because we are, are going to talk about our favorite movies. Um, the theology of superheroes. Hmm. Let's get into the theology just a little bit. and A little, little, little bask in Yeah, that, you know. and I think it's probably good that we save this for last because we could probably talk about this forever, um, mm-hmm. you and me specifically. Um, mm-hmm. So it's going to limit us a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. First question: Why are we drawn to the to superhero stories, and why do they clearly do so well in the movie industry, um, as well as other superhero um, tales, stories? Mm-hmm. So why do you, I mean? I guess we could talk about why we personally like them, but why do we think? Why do we think it resonates? Is the question. My thinking. Hmm kind of spans it in a couple different ways one i think uh well most of these superhero movies have come out post 9 11 so that's an interesting see if we had mr statistic with us he could actually look that up and actually give us a statistic of how many of these superhero movies have come out after the whisper would be of no help in this question um (laughs) go get me some information bird (laughs) 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 <laughs> the problem is, is he can keep asking the crow and the crow will be like never more never yeah. more am i <laughs> um so i think that some of it has to do with it gives a a certain structure of one moral choices because i i i still believe that it's like if we were if we were you know, we are of a sentient kind of being. So, like, we we make choices sometimes independently of our biological function, which mm-hmm. can be either be really cool, like baseball, or it can be really frustrating, like most other things in the world. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a there's a piece that we are drawn to when characters are forced to make really tough choices, and they have the courage to actually make the right choice. And it, and it feels like the right choice. It's not just like, hey, you made a so-so decision or, or, or she did a like, oh, wishy-washy job. Like, it, mm-hmm. like there was actually like, no. The, the pressure's on. The pressure's right? on. And One woman takes the sword mm-hmm. and takes on, you know, whoever it is, the god of war or, or you, know, you know, whatnot. Right. Um, but does it in a way, like uh, the, the mo- one of the recent examples um, – which always got me in in the movie with uh, uh, with Chadwick Boseman um, as T'Challa is his whole struggle. He's not just Black Panther; he's also the king. So right, yeah. He's he's struggling with this notion of like responsibility. He's keeping the secret mm-hmm. from the world about who he is. He's not he's not only keeping the secret of himself; he's also keeping the secret of his nation to mm-hmm. the rest of the world for all this time. And the fact that they are so powerful and they have all these resources and they have all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's this interesting struggle of him really having to make, like he's a, a technically one of the most, I think he is the wealthiest character in all of fiction because of vibranium. Like he like, just sits on this mountain of vibranium, which is, right. I think, you know, he's like worth like $50 trillion dollars or something, something like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I think, I think like close to second is Scrooge McDuck and then third is Smaug the dragon. So it's like, that's, that's like the ranking, I think. Interesting. Um, yeah. But like, so there's, there's something fascinating to, to watch a character who is given all this power mm-hmm. and yet makes the right decision. And I think there's something that is very attractive to that. I don't think it's by accident that we're attracted to that. Right. Um, but I think that there's a there's a piece of that in particular anyway that sticks out. It's like amplified, see. right? It's just this amplified aspect of humanity that seems mm-hmm. like because you always have like super speed is like there's it's kind of, there's a formula, right? There's like mm-hmm. we just went through it, right? 
here's my character's ability, my superpower. Mm-hmm. And then this is this is how this superpower came to be. This is, you know, why. And it's, I mean, I don't think it, it's no surprise to me that, you know, that it resonates so much with us because we are heroes, right? Like in our head, like we're all, <laughs> we're all like so heroic in our heads, <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I mean, I, I honestly think that th- theologically speaking, I think like that we're all kind of living out this heroic narrative in our heads. And it's, it's why it's so traumatizing when bad things happen, right? Because yeah, yeah, it's You're like, it's why like me? this, this isn't supposed to happen to me, right? Like right. this is supposed to happen and this is supposed to happen. And then I'm supposed to go through this. Like, yeah, I'm supposed to go through trials, but like at the same time, like, like where's the end, you know, and where is it at? Right. Um, and there, there's an identity behind that. That's, you know, not actually very healthy when you really think about it. Um, but to see it played out on a screen, you know, and it's the same, I feel like with any, with any movie where, you know, it's a happy ending, <laughs> like there's, right. there's, that's a reason people are drawn to these stories. Um, because it's like you, you, like you feel like that's how your life should be in a certain way. It has a lot of religious implications too, where I've, right. I've always thought, I mean, I've always yeah. thought that, uh, uh, Superman is literally like the comic book version of Jesus of Nazareth of yeah. just being like, there's this person who has been sent from his father mm. to a different world. Right. Who was born in a small, insignificant, quote yeah. unquote, right. uh, town. Do you, I mean, do you think, do you know if that was actually the, like, allegory I, behind it? Or? I don't know if that was the specific allegory. Okay. But it can be something that can be easily drawn, if nothing else, again, because of its... And, and this is the thing I've always found interesting about Superman, is the emphasis of having ultimate power but not using it. Mm. Um, because it, 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 it reflects a lot of like the way that the... Uh, like even how the Gospels are structured as, a, as, as just a, a narrative, is that mm-hmm. there's all these times in which the hero, who in this case is Jesus of Nazareth... Um, right will be in these situations where he could or could not do something and he chooses not to he essentially abdicates his power mm. for a greater good a greater right. cause you know yeah. that kind of thing yeah right um so there's a piece of me that's always intriguing about that mm-hmm. and i and i think that there is that that sense of like oh, that'd be so interesting to have all that power and they'd be like not gonna do it i'm not gonna right. use it i mean it, it's almost like a magician refusing to just like participate in in the magic but like I don't know, just, just like, but still having, having the aura a good, of a magician. Yeah, and having a good reason not to. Right, and, exactly. So, and yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, it, I, you're, yeah, you're right. It will, in yeah. the, I mean, this, it, the religious aspect does play a huge role. And I'm comfortable talking about it. We haven't really talked about it, but I mean, I'm, we, we met at church. We're, yeah. we're both yeah. believers, um, Christian. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's it's interesting now being so into stories in my older yep. age <laughs> and yep. like like stuff like the matrix like stuff that like i really enjoyed um it's like this resurrection aspect and this like all of that is very prominent when we talk about heroes we talk about he- narrative heroes specifically it's part of the heroic journey is kind of this resurrection finding joy right. in or finding jo- yeah finding finding peace in in the chaos at the end right and finding finding gain in the loss is right. is part of that so this resurrection aspect is is huge so so yeah part of me is you know it's like like yeah i mean i feel like that plays into the superhero conversation um because superheroes are constantly going through that right they i mean yep. they're constantly going through this struggle they're constantly having to kind of this concept of dying to self um like you said like having the power the capability realizing that they either can't use it or shouldn't use it or that yes. it has to be controlled in some way mm-hmm. like like yeah that's that whole conversation is feels like just a very amplified way of talking about kind of talking about yourself right to mm-hmm. um understand i mean yeah. Honestly, too, like a, a great example of this, and it's not even a superhero movie, but I think it, it talks about someone who is a superhero in their own mind, like what you have very astutely right. 
put yeah. is Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. Because Phil is the hero of his of his own Absolutely. self. Like Absolutely. he thinks he's the greatest you know, the greatest things on sliced bread and you right. know, he's the weatherman in Pittsburgh and he's like, <laughs> I'm gonna do great things and you know right. Um, uh, uh, and he doesn't like Larry, and he and he and he and he hates the place he was at last year because it was a flea bag or you know whatever he said. Yeah. Um, but what's really interesting is that when he, I mean, it's literally in the movie he dies to himself several mm-hmm. times, and yeah. then he realizes that he has to actually die to self, where he is not the focus. It's mm-hmm. his purpose is to be with you know to help other people. Yeah. And it's not even to like impress impress uh, um, Anna McDowell's character uh, Rita. It's not even to impress her. It's to literally help other people. Mm. And then and like there's that great that great line where she's like, "Hey, do you want to get some coffee?" He's like, "Hey, can we get it? I'm gonna do some. I'll do a rain check. I'll run some errands." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Some errands." And then he like goes and saves a bunch of people and then comes back. Right. Yeah. But it's that notion of like the the the. Um, What's the old saying? You know, if you if you try to save your life, you lose it, and if you try to lose your life, you save it. You know, it's mm. like it, it's the opposite of what you think it's going to be. Yeah. Um, where like that's the intrigue I think with right. superheroes is is but yeah, they yeah. Uh, I don't know it's 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 knowing I don't know it's power with wisdom. Mm-hmm. I've, I've thought that I, I'll still stick to that because I think that well, most yeah, it's the yeah. it's the classic Spider Man quote right with great power comes comes great, great responsibility. Oh, it's not donuts. Um, I mean, we can look it up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> great power comes great. I'm, I'm watching the director's cut or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, release the Snyder ben. cut. <laughs> Uncle Ben. Uncle um, Ben. Theologically, it's it it is it's very interesting. Um, why superheroes exist? I'm glad they exist, though. I'm glad we have superheroes. Um, yep. do you do you think that? Do you ever find yourself thinking or wanting superheroes to actually exist in our actual world? Or do you maybe believe that they actually exist in our world? See, I think they exist. Okay. Um, let's, let's let's get into that. Let's, let's it's unravel a, that. Okay, I'll <laughs> unravel that. I think um I'm going to I'm going to throw one out there and feel free to uh Cast a a uh, a a a devil's advocate vote in this particular fashion. Right. Yeah, uh, it's the reason why I'm wearing this hat right now. Is my hero one of my what, who I believe is a superhero in the modern times is Jackie Robinson, who okay. was a baseball player, played for the 42. Brooklyn Dodgers, and uh, say again, forty two, right? Yeah, forty two, number forty two. Yep, uh, played for the. 42 played uh, played for the Brooklyn Dodgers who are now in Los Angeles and are currently battling it out with the Atlanta Braves. I have no idea the score. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jack in his time, he, for those, I'm sure most people who are listening to this podcast are at least familiar with the name have probably either heard about him through school or through a book or through baseball itself or sports. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was the first uh, black American player to play for major league baseball. Now, this is not to say that the Negro Leagues were not already a fully functioning and very flourishing league at the time, um, but during that time it was segregated and, and whites and blacks wouldn't play with each other. All that being said, so uh, right. Branch Rickey, who's the manager of the um, uh, Dodgers, wants to get him on board, and, and he hires him under the specific instruction that he cannot in, by any means retaliate, talk back, any kind of thing of against whatever mm. is going to be dished at him, right? Um, yeah. you know, thrown whatever. at him, yeah. thrown at him. Now, to me, that is a superhero category in mm. my book because not and, and this is the thing. Not only did he do what he he was asked to do under his own incredible self will and discipline to not you know, retaliate when people would like cleat his legs or right. call him all sorts of uh, indecent language and, and right. terrible words. Unsportsmanlike um, stuff beyond our imagination. Oh probably. yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in ways that would, I would, I would be thrown out of a game very quickly. Right. Um, he also played brilliantly. Like mm. he's largely considered one of the, one of the best infielders to have ever played the game, which I right. think like that kind of, anyway, He's a right. superhero in the modern times in my book, at least right. on like the sheer athleticism meets uh, discipline and wisdom within power. Okay. So, like, 
I'll allow it. I, 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 but you sold me on it. That's the thing. And it's, you're, I mean, it's exactly what we're talking about. The pressure's on, right? Yep. It's exactly what we were talking about with superheroes. Pressure's on. He makes the right decision. Right. And, um, it's strenuous circumstances, unprecedented circumstances. I mean, he, he, he changed the face of, right. If not baseball, all of sports. I think that's, I think that's a very good example. Yeah. I think it's very good. Um, do you have one? I mean, I was going to use Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I was just, it's a cop out, but yeah, it's a, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think you can, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. probably some form of uh, heresy to, to call Jesus a superhero, but I mean, I think it's, it's valid, right? He's a superhero. So uh, name me one thing that you think when you read about him, mm-hmm. what's one thing that sticks out that's like a cool power that he has? Oh, healing. Obviously. Okay. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. the power to heal people. I mean, what would you not give, right? To to be able to heal somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like and I I mean, there's there's a common Christian belief that you can heal people through prayer. And I I subscribe to that, right, to a certain degree. Right, right. But right. um but I mean literally I mean, imagine like you're in a car crash, right, and your loved one's sitting right next to you and you're just like, Hey, got this. I got this just <laughs> right there on the head. <laughs> And you're fine, like oh man, yeah. super power. Like that's awesome. See, the, um, the problem is though, if it were me though, I'd become an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> you just, just I'd go be skydiving like, without a parachute. Hey, you're gonna yeah skydive, <laughs> sir. Where's your parachute? Don't need it. <laughs> there power I go. Healing. Power of healing. And then I realized like, oh, you gotta you know stay alive. Yeah, right. Yeah, to, that's actually know. a good question. If you yeah, can you heal yourself, or is it right. only other people you can heal? Yeah, and where does it exist? Like if like if you get your head <laughs> cut off. Sorry, this is probably a little traumatic, but if you get your head cut off, like can you tell your body to heal your head back? to like, It's the whole like uh, you know cartoon body trying to find the head in the woods. I'm over here. No, little to the left. <laughs> Wow, um, that that went in a different direction there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's, um, it's all, we're talking it's about okay. Jesus, and then my head fell off. It, it's okay. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, and the thing that always got me, um, and I think Bruce Almighty, the movie, was actually the one movie I think that did a really good job in yeah, actually saying, right. like, if you had the divine powers of somebody like Jesus, what would you do? Right. And one of my favorites is that, like, he didn't just turn water into wine. Like, he, he made a whole party happen. He yeah. pulled the moon in closer just to make it mm-hmm. more romantic, which caused right. tidal waves in other places. It's a cross um, between tulips and daisies. I call them to daisies. To daisies. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I think, like, it's it's humorous, and obviously it's extreme in some cases in the movie, but, like, right. I yeah. don't think it's dishonest. And that's the way the cookie, the crumbles. cookie crumbles. And that's the way it was. <laughs> and that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I <laughs> like it. <laughs> let's go into our closing topic we're going to talk about our favorite movie um i already talked about dark knight it's my favorite superhero movie um it's the superhero movie that got me interested not so much for the portrayal of batman but for the portrayal of obviously the joker and uh punster joker right (laughs) yes the joker yeah. So, but I mean, Dark Knight is is my favorite superhero. That's your movie favorite for that for that reason. Um, okay. So I got mine. You, you ready? Yeah. What is it? Um, I originally was going to choose Spider Man Two, uh, which is the Tobey Maguire one when he's the second one with yeah. Doc Ock and the, and the interesting cool, like, prehensile things. Yeah. I was going to pick that because, in particular, I found it interesting that it was a movie where he didn't want to be the superhero and it spends most of the story of him being like i don't want this or like trying to decide do i want this i have no Mm -hmm. idea where you know why aren't the webs coming out of my wrists right exactly um but after doing some more thinking i have to choose unbreakable unbreakable okay um Again, out of my league. I don't know what this is. What's so unbreakable? unbreakable is the m night Shyamalan movie that followed up Sixth Sense. It was the follow up to Sixth Sense. What? Okay. And M. Night Shyamalan wrote a movie that if you watch it in the context of our topic, it is actually a superhero origin story. But Oh, I have seen this. Mm-hmm. This is but Mr. Glass, right? 
Yep, Mr. Glass. Yes, I have David seen Dunn, this. And and who's who's uh, the I forget what they call him as the unbreakable like hero. Yeah, um, it's like the masked one or the cloaked one or something like that. Um, the cape. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the cape. right. Um, but the thing that I've always loved about that one uh-huh. is that it is a. It's almost like somebody living in the Marvel universe mm-hmm. who doesn't believe in themselves mm-hmm. or hasn't accepted that they are actually somebody like a superhero, and yeah. then discovering that they are, but never actually contacting Marvel, the the Avengers, about it. Yeah, like, right. It, it's like doing their own thing, yeah. affecting their own town. Like this right. could be something, I don't know, in a town like Zebulon, North Carolina. Some yeah. some place right. that like outside of Zebulon, maybe it won't, the word won't get around. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really liked the smallness of that movie. Yeah. Um, You're, I completely forgot about this movie. Yeah. I, I was a big fan of this movie. Yeah. Unbreakable. I think that's my favorite one so far yeah. right now. Cool. Yeah. Unbreakable, um, Dark Knight. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, hey, hey everybody, that's our show. Thanks for watching and listening. Um, if you yeah, if you if you are listening, uh, please remember that we have the YouTube channel at yeah. Table Talk with Rich and Alex. And if you're watching, uh, feel free to give us a listen on your on your drive, commute to work, anything like that. You can just plug us into your your ears and uh we'll be right there talking with being yep. what's 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 the name mr whisper the, whis- the whisperer the whisper the mistress will be whispering mistress. into your ear <laughs> just just don't start talking to the animals uh and on that note guys of course uh, please don't forget to like subscribe comment uh we'd obviously love to hear from you um and just to hear what you think uh what we did right and what we inevitably uh spoke wrongly on um, right and of course uh for these uh, we'd mm-hmm. also like to thank uh, the following. Yep, Rockford Brewery uh, in Rockford, Michigan. Um, this is their duality beer. And and I would like to thank Gizmo Brew Works in Raleigh, North Carolina, for their Civic Duty beer. And of course, yeah. remember to vote. Uh, though it'll probably be after the election, so remember yeah. to vote for the primaries and your local governances, congressional right. seats, yep. etc. Thank you to uh, publisher Upper Deck Entertainment for the legendary game. Um, go out and play that game. It's a great great deck building game. Um, if you're in a superhero punching people type of mood, um, that's a great game to play. So, so cool. yeah, that's it. Um, I'm out of beer, so I will toast you with an empty an empty mug. As will I, basically. Just a little <laughs> All right. bit left. All right. Um, well, until next time, guys. Be happy. Brew happy. And game, game on. Game on. I want a pilsner, sir. That's your fifth one. I'm not feeling anything because I'm Thor, the god of thunder and drink.